All right, welcome back, everyone. I'm here for Windbreaker episode two. First episode was very fun. We have our main character, Sakura, who has white hair and black hair on different sides, and heterochromia as well, some sort of bilateral dimorphism. A natural thing which makes him look like he has dyed hair. And people have always treated him poorly because of his looks. They always assume the worst of him, thinking him a delinquent. And so he has grown up with very, very little in the way of love shown to him from other people, and I guess struggles to see kindness in other people when it is directed towards him, at least. Mm. And he has heard about Furin High School, a group of low-live delinquents who are fighting amongst each other for the top spot, like the scum they are. And he feels like, ah, that sounds like the place for me, given how he gets treated in society, and given his own feelings of inability to feel good about himself unless he's beating up people who he feels are weaker than him. Mm. And particularly people who act strong but are weaker than him. Yeah. But when he arrives, he ends up protecting a lady from a group of thugs who are harassing her, and she shows him thanks immediately, which is confusing and new to him, so he gets quite embarrassed over that. She feeds him at her cafe, and he talks about his desire from Furin and the school, which she says he won't be able to do well in because he's alone, emotionally speaking. And then the group of thugs from before come back, smashing up the the street, calling him out, essentially. He beats up a bunch of them himself, but then has to protect the girl again, and that makes it a bit hard for him. But then some people from Furin come to save the day, because Furin aren't a group of mere low-life delinquents. They are the heroes of the town. They are delinquents, but they use their strength in fighting to protect the folk around here from other delinquents who have more nefarious goals. And so they are the heroes of this little area. And that is something that Sakura, despite his struggles in accepting people's kindness, clearly wants to be a part of. So that's a cool setup. What I'm most interested in is meeting the other members of Bofurin, this group of delinquents, and particularly their leader, and seeing how Sakura will interact with them. So, let's get into the episode. Timer version on YouTube, picture-in-picture version in the description down below. If you could, if you're watching the picture-in-picture version, mute this video in a separate tab. More view time helps the channel. Let's go! <laughs> I see. 
He was helping an old lady. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> <laughs> of course, unable <laughs> to refuse help. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> it's not like he has anything else to do. <laughs> what an introduction. It's still got the tag on. So I'm assuming he is also a a new student. <laughs> Take it off. <laughs> Why are you rolling around on the floor? <sighs> Yes, yes, he did. <laughs> the hair? Is he going to say they're very cool? <laughs> it's probably not a response he's got before. <laughs> Got a notebook. <laughs> he is away. That's very good of them. This guy feels very strongly about it. This <laughs> 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 is completely ignoring him. <laughs> He seems a little clumsy. Not the fighting type, I feel. Part of the uh, the information gathering group, clearly. <laughs> It's 
It's like green, right? Or is it red? <laughs> red. Yes, and then you take off the outside and get the beans inside. True, although, you know, to some extent, you do have to rely on experience to uh, base your initial assumptions on. <laughs> Clearly. Fresh bread. Mm. <laughs> You've already got a reputation. <laughs> <laughs> Getting all the food. <laughs> I think he's a bit young for that. <laughs> it's a sign of a strong community. I mean, yes, quite clearly, based on the fact that nobody previously has. What's up? Ah, dude has gotten into a fight. Yes, so he's not good at fights, is the impression I get, but he's not one to back down. <laughs> Be purged. Of course. Perfectly timed entrance. <laughs> He's just here for a fight. Of course. Is going to be your catchphrase, isn't it? <laughs> Rather dramatic cut.
No. He will not be disappointed because he didn't back down, I'm sure. Okay. They are trying to... emulate your your saviors you just need more fighting practice clearly <laughs> Come on. I'm sure he's going to say something here. There you go. <laughs> yes. Even though you weren't able to win in a fight, you still saved someone. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> Still not used to it. <laughs> Needs to get all the information. <laughs> Just any positive attention makes him go completely red. <laughs> there. On your side, huh? Nice flag. <laughs> Very intimidating. <laughs> As they said. <laughs> He has gotten quite attached to you. It's like a puppy. <laughs> the crows. Yes, I'm sure they will be very varied people. Very small sign. <laughs> of course, he knows all of them. Yes. No, not at all. <laughs> what have you seen? What? <laughs> Is it someone you know, actually?
Okay, so somebody in the class who is perhaps a little uh, aggressive <laughs> that he's worried about, perhaps. Mm. <laughs> That's not what he wants them to think, though. <laughs> Is he going to kick the door down? <laughs> yes, that would just be business as usual for him. Nice stew pull ups on the windowsill. <laughs> it's eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> Lol. <laughs> it's great how excited he is about that. <laughs> I see. Tuny Bure. <laughs> we'll see going for a shoulder pat yep <laughs> <laughs> Word has already spread. <laughs> Spell tips. Weird name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all is going pretty well. <laughs> For now. <laughs> Unless he uh, says the wrong thing. Which he is going to do so now. <laughs> oh, who's throwing desks? Mr. Gloomy. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> he seems rather aggressive, but why? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
I mean, given what we've set up, it might just be because Sakura's out of town. Hmm. Another option that pops into my mind is uh, he could be related to the girl and like be a, an older brother and that's what to or little brother <laughs> and be very overprotective of her you know could be something like that Shouldn't do what? <laughs> of course, you <he> did. <laughs> Indeed, he doesn't want to let it show, but. He is clearly a nice guy at heart. Mm. So, fun stuff. We've got a, a side character who is... He is positioned as the, the weak one. You often get this in the sort of traditional uh, heroic uh, group. You tend to have, like, the main character. You have a character who's more on the comedic side and then another character who is typically either a girl or is a lot more like aggressive or handsome or something like that has some sort of other distinctive character trait and this guy's clearly going to be kind of leaning into the comedic relief side of things he's not the strongest fighter although he does want to be stronger but we also show that he is brave enough to stick stick it out in a fight even if he can't do much which is a good starting point you know he can he can build his his fighting skills from that and then the ability to stay in will then become more useful once he's better at fighting in terms of practical purposes i don't think it's a skill that is necessarily the most helpful but it is a skill which is important later on yeah when you're in a situation where you're having to do a lot of fights you don't really want to commit yourself to a fight that is far beyond your skill level really on a sort of evolutionary survival level you know like you might think ah, oh, if i if i back down that just shows i'm weak but you know if the alternative is you die in the fight it's it's better to be weak than dead I would argue, because the weak can become strong. The dead cannot become strong. The dead will remain weak forever. <laughs> so there's, a, I would say, a balancing act to be struck there. But at the same time, it is easy to get into a, how would I say, a bit of a, a habit of running away too early. You know, if you're used to only have being so strong and running away when you meet people who are stronger than that level, then even as you get stronger, you might still be emotionally stuck at that level. And so you might prematurely run if you don't constantly self-analyze and make sure you're not doing that. Yeah. So having the ability to stick it out even when it's tough is important. And also there are some times where to some extent, your own survival is less important than the goal of stopping the people. In a case like this, he was less concerned with his own well-being than he was with the well-being of the people on the street, because he is a, a Furin boy, he admires those heroes of justice and wants to be like them, and he already has that mindset ingrained into him. He cares more about other people than himself and so he is willing to risk his own health in order to protect other people's health which is very noble mm. yes but maybe he should go on rounds with another person rather than patrolling alone given his strength mm. at least for now 
Yes, and we also teach Sakura a lesson about making assumptions. Which is an interesting one, because assumptions are part and parcel to human interaction to some extent. Generally speaking, humans have evolved to base our initial impressions off of on people off of our experience of people who share similar visual traits. So, for instance, him, whenever he has seen people who look like this kid whose name I forget. <laughs> what was it again? Give me a minute. Nire was his name. Uh, so people who are like Nire in that they dress in a very, very flashy way are typically people who are, to use a word he later uses, posers. People who act strong but aren't actually strong and will chicken out and run away in a fight. And to some extent, that is probably true on average. A lot of people who are strong don't feel the need to flaunt their strength. And a lot of people who try and flaunt their strength or whatever are typically doing so because they feel insecure about how strong they actually are. And it serves as a sort of form of intimidation, so to speak. You know, it's like geese. This is a weird connection. But geese are well known within the animal kingdom for being way more aggressive than they have any right to be. And they're surprisingly effective at intimidating people and other animals more often. <laughs> and so a geese can like charge down a cow and scare the cow away, despite the fact that the geese has no physical capability to realistically injure a cow. But they are loud enough and scary enough and aggressive enough <laughs> that they can make others back down. And that sometimes is the purpose of the sort of gaudy, aggressive outfits that some people wear. It's meant to have other people assume that they are stronger than they are so that they won't start a fight. And sometimes so that people will just do what they say, you know? Like uh, the, the thugs who are accosting the ladies, as seems to be a common thing around here, they dress and act in a way which is portraying themselves as physically strong because it gives the impression that if you resist us, we might not be non-violent with you, you know? Mm. Even though, like, the ones we see are not, like, useless in a fight, but they're clearly nowhere near as good as the Furin people. Mm. Yeah, and so it's not unreasonable for Sakura, given his personal experience, to assume that Nire would be the same. But the important thing about assumptions is that it's alright to make them and to be cautious because of them. You know, like he wouldn't want to trust Nire to, to guard his back without for more information. But it's important to recognise that they are assumptions and be very willing to discard or correct them when new information comes around. And Sakura does that with a little bit of a push from uh, the cafe lady, whose name I also don't remember. <laughs> I'm very bad with names. She basically tells him a story about coffee, and the lesson of that story was not, you should just know that coffee beans are red, or you shouldn't assume that coffee beans are brown because you've never seen them before. It's, you should be willing to accept new information when it is available to you. And that is what I would say Sakura does later on. He runs into the guy trying to hold down some thugs, not doing very well. He beats up the thugs himself. But he recognises that Nire was, was doing his best. He wasn't chickening, chickening, out, ugh, chickening out and running away. He was holding his ground, trying his best to do what he could. And ultimately he did achieve the primary goal of protecting the lady. Yeah, so Sakura learns not to judge a book too harshly by its cover, I would say. Mm. Yes, and that helps to establish a bond between them a little bit. As Nire himself changes his own opinion, of Sakura a little bit. He had gotten, they'd gotten off on the wrong foot with their initial meeting a little bit. 
<laughs> when Sakura is unable to leave him without acknowledging his not lameness. Nire is somewhat smitten with him immediately and is now kind of on his side. And is going to show him right to the top, is what he says. Now, I'm assuming that where the show is going to go is that Sakura will be aiming to become the next leader of Furin, regardless of his reasons for doing so. He's going to be aiming for that. And Nire will end up being a useful right-hand man for him. I do not think Nire's intention at the minute is to help him overthrow the current Furin leader. But he will serve as a constant friend for Sakura. And so that should be pretty, pretty fun. But right now we're going to have to deal with this guy who seems to be pretty keen on crushing Sakura for reasons not yet explained. As I said, I expect either he has beef because he's out from out of town, or he is the, the girl at the cafe's brother or something and is looking to protect her. <laughs> yeah. Because we did have a mention last episode of not telling you-know-who when she is in danger. So there is somebody out there who is desperate to protect her and is clearly very, very aggressive when she is threatened. So could it definitely be him? We'll have to wait to see, though. Hmm. Yeah. I also really appreciate that everybody else in the class is like totally chill about him <laughs> you know Nire was quite worried but partly because he's already established himself as somebody who will help protect the town Suo gives him a very quick pat on the back of approval this brings everybody else in they start talking about it being impressive that he did that on his own when he wasn't even started in the school yet and so the entire class, generally speaking, has a positive impression of him. And that's that's very nice to see, because it very easily could have gone in the direction of, you know, aggression. But it chose not to, and I like that. And I think it's very reasonable, given what we have seen of Furin. Like, the Furin kids that we have seen so far, they all have a bit of an edge to them. They all have that delinquency aspect to them, but none of them seem unreasonable so far, except for this one that's just come in the door. But we have yet to hear his reasons, so maybe he will have some reasonable reasons. We'll see. Hmm. I also really like Suro, just generally. The very, like, bold-faced lies that are, like, super obviously lies, but then Sakura kind of buys them a little bit, particularly the he introduces himself as Leonardo DiCaprio, which is obviously a very obvious lie, but Sakura not only believes it, but gets super excited and starts to try using English, which is surprisingly cute. <laughs> yeah. So I like that guy. He seems very enjoyable, a character to have around. We also see the the workout guy in the background. He seems like he's going to be a pretty major one and the one with headphones in mm. yeah so overall pretty fun episode i look forward to the next one let's have a quick look through see if there's more details to talk about <laughs> he is already being ingratiated into the community by having people ask him for help which is very cute Especially the old lady who is not as unwell as she seems. You know, she says she couldn't work. Sorry, couldn't walk, but jumps down pretty quickly and is seems like she can walk pretty fine. But still thanks him. And there's good reason to, because as you get old, walking, generally speaking, becomes more of a hazard. Essentially what happens is, particularly at joints, there is cartilage around the, the bone connections, which helps it slide easier. As you get old, that cartilage wears down a little bit and becomes a bit more fragile. And so when you are older, walking more can cause more damage to your joints. 
And so having a, a way to get around without having to actually walk can maintain your joints a bit better. Mm. Yes, and then she genuinely thanks him, of course, and he, as usual, gets bright red, which is... It's going to be a continuing character trait, I'm sure. It'll be interesting to see if he eventually gets over it and manages to accept that people are willing to thank him. But it's going to be a while, clearly. It's not that easy to change. Mm. Yep, and then in he comes. We immediately establish that he's a bit of a klutz. He's quite clearly very into the whole Furin thing. But it's also fairly apparent from how they portray him that he's not going to be the greatest fighter. <laughs> yeah, I I will say I do like his shirt. <laughs> you know, that sort of purple color with the very nice white patterning on it. I think it looks pretty cool. <laughs> the glasses, maybe he could do without. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fact that he is worried about Asakura being stressed and that is why his hair is turning grey is quite funny. Because that is the thing that happens. Stress does turn people's hair grey or makes it fall out. Both of those can happen. <laughs> but it's quite obviously not what's happened. And normally the uh, obvious assumption would be that the hair is dyed. But um, yeah, he's he's a bit of an odd one. And um, it's very, very funny when he does that, and then we get a shot of Cafe Lady laughing as well. Helps us uh, relate to her quite a bit. You know, she's kind of an audience insert for the purpose of reacting to those jokes. Mm. And he's got a top secret journal, which is, again, very much strengthening this idea of him as somebody who is not just into Furin as a vibe, but into the people of Furin. He's, this top secret note, almost certainly, we can tell immediately, contains information about people from Furin and people who may be going to Furin. It's uh establishing him, him as not just like a not just a poser, not somebody who's looking to get in with this crowd, but somebody who is like a genuine fanboy of this group <laughs> and wants to become like them. Mm. Yeah. And then they completely ignore him because he has to go on patrols. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And he gets lectured a little bit about assumptions. Coffee beans are red. Well, coffee uh, fruit are red and they contain a bean, which is a, a light brown. <laughs> mm. Which then gets processed quite heavily, I believe, into the coffee beans that you get for the purpose of making coffee. <clears throat> yep. Then we have him walk around the town. He gets a lot of things from people because people already know him. It's more evidence of the fact that word about him has spread very quickly. And he is completely baffled by it. And then the lady comes asking for help. We have more kind of faceless bad guys. I say faceless. They obviously have faces, but we have no idea who they are. We have no backstory. There's no need for backstory. These are just generic hoodlums that are obviously bad people because they were harassing a woman. It's just one of the easiest shorthands for making somebody a bad dude. Mm. Yeah. Sakura comes to defeat them. We do <laughs> skip out a little bit on the the fight by just having a cut to the dust clearing, which is quite fun as a direction decision. <clears throat> like, if you're going to skip a fight, that's a good way to do it. Mm. Yeah, we get his backstory. One second, I really need to clear my throat. Sorry about that. So, we get his backstory. He was bullied and was protected by a Furin kid, and that is his ultimate idol, really. You know, one person saved him and he idolized that person. And that person then in his mind shifted away from being an individual and into the general idea of Furin, because they are a group. They are not any one individual. They are part of a united front, of course. 
and now he aims to be like him, and he has started that by emulating the clothing and going to the school and doing a lot of research on people who are at Verin to find out things about them. And that's a, a good start, to be honest. Sometimes a change in attitude and behavior can start with something simple like a change in look. It's the idea behind the common romance trope of uh, women cutting their hair when they have a breakup or something. Mm. Yeah. Lady comes, thanks to both of them. There's a moment that I think is quite good when the lady comes where he has a a clear look of embarrassment on his face. And yeah, there's a part of me which feels like he is kind of ashamed for not having done a better job. For her, though, that's not necessarily relevant. Like, maybe it would be better if the guy could protect her without getting hurt himself, but the ultimate important thing is that he protected her. And that is what she is thankful for. Mm. Yeah. Very nice. These two have now become kind of friends, <laughs> although Sakura is a little cautious about it. And then they arrive in school. We drop some names of people who we don't know yet. I imagine they're going to be the obviously designed characters. Shosan, or Suo-san rather, we've already met. I imagine the other names he said were the pull-up guy and the one with the headphones. Mm. And then the one he's worried about is clearly the one that comes in at the end of there. Yep. And then we go. I've already talked about this scene. It's very fun. I, I like this guy a lot. He seems very fun. And everybody likes Sekina. <laughs> Much to his <laughs> surprise and panic. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And then in Sugishita comes very aggressively. And he's a big guy. Very, a very cool shot to end on. Camera slightly lower to emphasize the height difference. And not only is he tall, but he's also very broad-shouldered. Yeah, has a has a big chest, quite lanky arms and legs, but has the the general size and power behind him. And of course, the the long dark hair gives a slightly gloomy vibe. The vibe of somebody who is perhaps not friendly, generally speaking. Mm. so looking forward to that fight i guess that'll do for this episode hope you enjoyed it i'll see you again for the next one bye bye